Is that it? Okay. Okay, well, let's look at the uh, next ch chapter in Nectar of Devotion, chapter 16. Spontaneous devotion further described. Now remember in the past, in the, in the previous chapter, a spontaneous devotion was defined as spontaneous attraction for something while completely absorbed in thoughts in it, thoughts of it with an intense desire of love. So spontaneous attraction, completely absorbed in thoughts, with an intense desire of love for Krishna. And there are two categories. One category is called sensual attraction, and the other is called relationship. So we already talked about sensual attraction last night. Tonight we're going to talk about relationship. In the attitude of the denizens of Vrindavan, such as Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, is to be found the ideal concept or transcendental concept of being the father and mother of Krishna, the original personality of Godhead. Factually, no one can become the father or mother of Krishna. But a devotee's possession of such transcendental feelings is called love of Krishna in parental relationship. The Vrishnis, Krishna's relatives at Dwarka, also felt like that. So spontaneous love of Krishna is the parental relationship, or sorry, so spontaneous love of Krishna in the parental relationship is found both among those denizens of Dwarka who belong to the dynasty of Vrishni and among the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Spontaneous love of Krishna as exhibited by the Vrishnis and the denizens of Vrindavan, is eternally existing in them. In the stage of devotional service where regulative principles are followed, there is no necessity of discussing this love, for it must develop of itself at a more advanced stage. You see? The, the people who follow the path of regulative principles don't think there's any need to discuss all this stuff. They say, well, you just follow the rules and that's it. And they have a point in that uh, just by discussing it, you can't develop these feelings uh, by some mechanical or external process. You can only develop these feelings by discovering them within yourself. In other words, they have to already be there. They have to be a part of your eternal identity. This relationship between the soul, the living entity, and Krishna, uh, this is our original identity. So we have to rediscover this original spiritual relationship. And then we can approach Krishna with this particular mood, whether it's parenthood, friendship, conjugal love, servitorship, uh, and uh, also, there are innumerable family relations that the different Vrishnis have with Krishna. Some are his sons, some are his wives, some are his daughters, some are his cousins, uncles, you know, just so many different family relationships there. Uh, so these, this is what's meant by relationship in spontaneous love. All these devotees have spontaneous love for Krishna. The next section is called Eligibility for Spontaneous Devotional Service. Who is eligible for Raganuga Bhakti? Persons desiring to follow in the footsteps of such eternal devotees of the Lord as the Vrishnis and the denizens of Vrindavan are called Raganuga devotees, which means that they are trying to attain to the perfection of those devotees. Those Raganuga devotees do not follow the regulative principles of devotional service very strictly, <laughs> do they? <laughs> but by spontaneous nature, they become attracted 
to some of the eternal devotees such as Nanda or Yashoda, and they try to follow in their footsteps spontaneously. There is a gradual development of the ambition to become like a particular devotee, and this activity is called Raganuga. Okay, so, yes. Uh, what you just read, you said, try to follow spontaneously. But that yeah. seems like kind of not compatible. Well, no. It, you what cannot is it, try. What it means is that um, when you are following the path of, of external regulative devotional service, the impetus comes from outside. You see? Like, for example, you see your spiritual master doing certain activities. And so you try to emulate, you try to follow the spiritual master. Or you see the other devotees doing this and that. Or you read in the Shastra that you were supposed to do certain things. And so you try to follow that. And that, that standard or the impetus for that devotional service is external to oneself. However, in spontaneous devotional service, the impetus for devotional service comes from within oneself. See, that's what spontaneous means. You see, mm -hmm. but this can actually be developed. That's the tricky part. Well, it's a little bit tricky, but try to understand that most people come to devotional service on the platform of regulative service. Okay? So at a certain point in that regulative service, one sits down and has a, a serious talk with himself and goes, you know, I've been following all these rules and regulations and, and this is very nice and I feel purified and certainly I've made much more advancement in spiritual life than I ever have by any other method. But there's still something missing. There's something in the core of my heart which is still not satisfied, still not fulfilled. This devotional service is very wonderful, you know. And I can feel something that, like, Krishna is satisfied by it. But at the same time, I can also feel that he wants, he wants something more. Hmm? That he could be even more happy, more satisfied by my devotional service. How can I do this? Well, let's see. If I read the, the stories in the Shastra of the great devotees and how they satisfied Krishna by their devotional service, I can see a common thread, a common trait amongst all of them, which is at some point in their life, they made a big decision, a big determination to serve Krishna in a certain way. See, like Krishna in Bhagavad Gita talks about Vyavasayatmika Buddhi. Vyavasayatmika means firm determination. Okay, so... They, all the great devotees who achieved success in devotional service, they made this determination how they were going to serve Krishna. And they usually did this either by association of a great devotee, such as their spiritual master, or by uh, following the examples of great devotees that, that they heard about, either through the scripture or through some other way. For example, Prahlad Maharaj, uh, sorry, not Prahlad Maharaj, because uh, he had a direct spiritual master, but um, Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj heard that great devotees go to the forest and chant mantras. They go to the forest, they perform austerities, and they chant mantras. So he said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to approach Krishna by going to the forest and performing severe austerities and chanting mantras. And that's what he did. See? So um, other devotees, when they approach this stage of their devotional service, they look into the Shastra and they see, they, well, there's all these different devotees and they all have a different kind of relationship with Krishna. So what kind of, what kind of relationship do I want with Krishna? How can I follow the example of these great devotees? And after a while, 
he, he finds one devotee or one class of devotees that inspires him that, that yes, I want to serve Krishna in this way. And then from inside, from his own determination, he makes that decision that determination, that vyavasayatmika buddhi, that unbreakable determination to serve Krishna in that particular way, based on his own taste, his own attraction for the service of a particular class of devotee, either in the scriptures or in his own life that he sees. So this is how one develops spontaneous service. See? It's not like somebody came along and told him, hey, you should serve Krishna like this or like that. No, it came from his 